Hello everybody. Welcome to Visionary Box. Uh this is uh Dr. Kunti Krishna with us once again today. He is no uh, new face to us. He has been with us in the previous uh, programs uh on various different topics. Yes, today is a hard cat. Uh, I think uh, uh we both should not be talking too much about it, especially me. having a uh, problem over there essentially but never 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 baldness is beautiful in fact <laughs> isn't i how i of the beholder i guess okay now let's go into the hair cast straight away yeah. um t- uh, gopi tell us about the basis of uh, the scientific factors about hair and its composition so that it forms as a background for us to take the t- topic for the forwards yeah see hair and nails they are just appendages of uh, skin sure. they are considered as objects of uh, actual medical relevance but okay the medical relevance has been lost nowadays and they have okay. become objects of uh, say beauty and elegance as civilization okay. advanced what yeah. has happened is they have uh, become the objects of uh, adornment or appeal mm-hmm. so we know that uh, we are uh, humans they are we are the least hairy ma- mammals okay oh. and uh, too much of hair in uh, women and mm. not enough hair in men yeah equate with anxiety ah okay yeah. it it will okay. it will yeah and um, uh, as you asked about the composition the basically for a common man i would say that uh, it consists of uh, much of keratin okay, okay. 95% of the keratin is on yeah. in the hair it also yeah. consists of uh, some minerals as well as c- certain elements like okay. uh, <clears throat> uh, calcium iron magnesium copper okay oxygen okay. hydrogen sulfur etc and uh, it, it uh, in in common terms i can say it has an outer cuticle and an inner okay. cortex the cuticle wow. is highly keratinized and it's okay. very strong okay. okay it forms the protection and as a as a barrier okay but uh, this cortex uh, gives the elasticity and the flexibility for the hair sure okay and the the part which we see up i uh, mean uh, the the like like the tip of the iceberg is what we see the sure. all the mechanism is beneath the skin okay, okay. it all happens so, right okay yeah there is a bulb there is an isthmus there is an infundibulum and this uh, part this bulb has the hair matrix from which all this uh, hair keratinization happens and the hair is pushed out in each cycle sure and the second part is isthmus which is connected to i mean i can say this hair follicle is connected to uh the erector pili muscle so that's why we get when we get goosebumps the hair stand up okay so that that does it mean that for every hair there is an erector pili muscle yes yes it's attached oh, and gosh. uh it's mm-hmm. also attached to the sebaceous glands okay okay so this is the uh mean common attachment of uh mean the common structure of a hair follicle sure okay uh does hair have any function at all of course of course because hair uh, as i said uh, the the important functions of hair is mainly protection sure. protection from cold sunlight okay. okay from the uv exposure and sure. as a camouflage and it okay. also has a very important function which like spreading the <clears throat> apocrine order to attract the opposite gender ah All and right. in certain yeah and in certain places like the nasal passage it also screens the nasal passage sure. it gives it, it it improves the tactile sensation okay. and also it reduces the friction in certain areas like intertrigenous areas okay. and of course as you know it has an excellent cosmetic and aesthetic appeal sure okay all right okay uh, i can understand that now when i was uh, preparing for this interview i came across we do have humans have different types of hair is that true yeah 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 it's, so the thing is it's not the different types in a human but different stages like we have uh, i mean when we are born as a newborn 
uh, we'll have a different kind of hair which is called the lanugo hair the baby no. hair the baby which is, okay yeah which is unmodulated not a deep okay. pigmented hair and okay. it heads yeah. in 8 to 9 months sure then develops the wellus hair which is okay. called the fleece fleece hair which is seen throughout the body okay okay and then after puberty we start developing the terminal hair which is modulated and pigmented which is mainly seen on the scalp beard mustache area axilla and the pubis all right so that is the terminal hair means that's the final hair that's right. that's no. the final hair yeah all right so uh, uh, how do they contribute to the overall hair health cycle uh, in the sense that uh, uh, you told that this uh, lanugo hair lasts for this much amount of uh, period of time yeah. like yeah. the terminal hair does it have any life cycle at all yeah yeah of course see the terminal hair it undergoes uh, say uh, around 7 to 10 cycles life cycles ah. that is we call it as the growth phase Okay. so in general when i talk about the phases of hair i can mm. say it has an anagen phase which is called the growth phase okay. which lasts for around 2 to 7 years on an average say 1000 days every, every every hair every hair has an anagen phase for 2 to 3 years, years. Okay. Yeah. right yes and it has an intermediate phase which is called the catagen phase which lasts for say 1 to 3 weeks on an okay. average 10 days and okay. a telogen phase which is called the resting phase mm. or the falling phase mm. uh, it lasts for 1 to 3 months say 100 days so okay. normal not in a normal scalp 90% yeah. almost 90% will be in the anagen phase and 10% in the telogen phase sure Yeah. Okay. And a normal scalp usually consists of uh, say 100,000 to 150,000 hairs. Okay. Okay. So mm-hmm. and the hair shedding is almost uh, 100 hairs per day. This is normal. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so there are certain yes, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's normal. 100 to 50, 150 hairs shedding is normal in an uh, in, in a normal uh, uh, circumstance. but if it exceeds 100 or 150 hairs per day then mm. it's something physiological sorry pathological ah uh, right okay okay yeah, yeah. and hair grows uh, more what do you think in men or women uh, from the question that you are posing to me it should be women i guess <laughs> no <laughs> men it is opposite yeah men have more hair actually men right. the hair growth is more in men Right. and uh, then then females it's more okay. in summer than in than in winter and ah. the and the density is also uh, density decreases with age as we as we are discussing i'll be telling about that sure uh, and uh, in the face mm. where do you where do you where, where do you think the the most uh, dense hairs are the most dense has is it the mustache or the beard no it is on uh. the fore In the, forehead. the forehead hair yes forehead. because it's yeah the forehead the forehead the oh, forehead right. yeah okay. because the density density I, i'm talking about the density not the pigmentation or the other sure. thing so yeah so the forehead and then comes uh, say uh, mm, uh, the other part of the face then scalp okay. then uh, body and then last comes the extremities right okay yeah, yeah. so and, that, that uh, explains uh, why you were... yeah go ahead please yeah go that, ahead. that that we will come to uh the scalp hair grows at a rate of uh, say half a millimeter 0.45 millimeters per day sure okay, okay. the beard uh, hair grows uh, lesser than that mm. 0.35 millimeters a day on an average okay. say uh, a scalp hair grows 6 inches uh per year right okay 6 inches per year right per year yeah okay so if that is if these things are going to happen like as you said the three phases that it will happen yeah something should be governing that the yeah. all three phases uh, i'm sure hormones should be playing a role i guess of course of course of course uh, hormones like uh, the estrogens progesterone progesterone uh, 
prolactin thyroid hormones androgen androgens play the most important part sure. because and these uh, hormones just they do not play like increasing or decreasing they are area mm-hmm. specific say okay. the eyebrows and the eyelashes they are not at all androgen dependent ah that's why okay. they are permanent okay. yes yeah. whereas axilla groin uh, i mean the pubic area body uh, chest face all these are dependent on androgens okay. Okay. okay so you can ask me another question why then we have so much of androgens and why we are losing hair because scalp hair it it behaves in a reverse manner to androgens right okay okay, okay. right so the more the androgens and the more you'll be losing hair yes so <laughs> i'm confident now man all right okay <laughs> now you got the answer right yeah okay good one okay now uh with age uh, progressing i understand that the changes happen in the hair texture and yeah. uh, or the color and etc could you yeah. please elaborate on that uh, as we age usually the follicles decrease in size <clears throat> and the shaft diameter also uh, i mean it's reduced narrowed down and okay. the pigment pigment as i said the pigmentation the, the production of melanin <clears throat> as well as the transfer of uh, melanin is also decreased sure. but it is influenced of course by genetic hormonal environmental factors as well as the lifestyle changes sure all right okay now uh, if that is going to be the case there are a lot of various <coughs> influence factors are here uh, etc uh, yeah. before going into specific problems of the hair related issues yeah. as a uh, uh special with this particular area what general advice and uh, that you would be giving to your uh, uh people or the patient who come to you or the advice or the practices that you recommend in order yeah. to maintain good healthy hair uh, see uh before going to that uh i would think that um, we should uh, we should discuss something about the alopecia the type of alopecia only then sure. the the viewers can understand what can be done and what okay. is the rational behind all these uh, the treatment so, modalities okay. so let me explain uh, the 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 types of alopecia uh, so, uh, for for the information uh, what exactly is alopecia yeah so in in general it's uh, alopecia is loss of hair okay, okay. so it can medical be, term. yeah medical mm-hmm. terminology and uh, it can be focal it's a localized in one area okay. like say androgenic androgenic alopecia uh, alopecia areata okay, okay. alopecia areata uh, alopecia areata is sudden smooth patch of uh, baldness so which okay. occurs because of lot of factors say <clears throat> stress or uh, hormonal factors or allergy like atopy so all these are related so sure and this is reversible okay okay there is another set which is called diffuse alopecia okay of uh, say for example it's called telogen effluvium where mm-hmm. after a, a period of stress say after a uh, delivery like after child birth or after a surgery after okay. a, a hospital admission or okay. after an a- accident or any trauma or stress okay you whatever it is 3 to 6 okay. months after this kind of stress okay yeah. there is diffuse loss of the telogen hair the resting hair okay so this is called diffuse alopecia right Whereas the common alopecia is what we are talking about is called mm-hmm. patterned alopecia patterned alopecia in the sense it also differs between men and women <clears throat> patterned alopecia uh, in men we we classify into it's called hamilton's grading from 1 to 7 stages Okay. depending okay. on the the recession of the forehead say like the m pattern which i have <clears throat> up to uh, the seventh grade what you have okay so all this is the hamilton's grading for men whereas okay. yeah this this is mainly the frontal recession as well as slowly it uh, invades the yeah. vertex vertex okay. but the occipital hair is permanent why because it is not at all affected by any kind of androgen the receptors is like this okay um 
whereas in females it's called ludwig's type it's just three grades it is just a central parting so they'll have a parting central parting a widening of the central parting of the hair okay so this is, is how we classify the way they comb is it natural happening or is it because the way they comb the central parting no no i'm i'm talking about the patterned alopecia in females exactly. because of uh, the androgens because of androgens yeah okay. it's called androgenic alopecia sure yeah all right okay now uh I'm sure this should be a common uh, problem that comes to you in your clinic I guess yeah are there uh, three kinds of alopecia in male and the female kind of alopecia how do you manage these alopecia cosmetically yeah rather than tr- treatment of them, yeah, yeah. As, uh, as i said as i said see first i have to uh, first di- uh, i have to find out the cause of alopecia okay. sure Yeah. So it could be stress, it could be due to infections, it could be smoking, it could be genetic, hormonal, drugs, diets, lot of factors. Okay. So we have to analyze what are what are the actual causes of this alop- kind of alopecia. Okay. Or whether they ha- having some deficiencies, say uh, iron deficiency, folic acid deficiency or vitamin D deficiency, zinc, okay, or any uh, hormonal uh, changes like so that we do all the hormonal investigations as well sure and second thing is i th- I, uh, i have to find out what kind of alopecia is it like as okay. i said is it a focal alopecia or it is a diffuse alopecia or is it a hormonal like androgenic alopecia or okay. sometimes sometimes even traction alopecia when when uh, females put a ponytail tight ponytail yeah okay. it, it causes traction alopecia sometimes okay. it could be a psychological alopecia which is called trichotillomania where it's a, it's a kind of obsessional compulsive disorder where uh, the patients try to pull their hair repeat mm. repetitive pulling of the hair and sure. uh, causing this kind of alopecia so all these have to be taken into account okay so in general i can tell you uh, i do initially a hair pull test so it's very simple i grasp uh, 20 to 60 hair okay. and uh, give a firm pull okay. if yeah, and if more than 10% of hair is in my hand it means a positive test right okay, okay. and second is uh, the uh, trichoscopy which we do like to mm-hmm. find out the follicular pattern it's like a uh, it's a it's a, it's a it's a invasive it's a non invasive tool okay okay and the third thing is the trichogram where the same okay. thing is pulled up pulled out and uh, examined under microscope sure we you know, because the bulbs and the tips behave in a different way in different kinds of the phases so okay. we i can find out how much uh, hair is in the telogen phase how much is in the anagen phase okay mm. and come to a arrive at a diagnosis sure then i also as i said i will do all the investigations for any deficiencies say okay. iron a uh, folic acid uh, ferritin okay zinc and uh, b12 i also do uh, zinc and vitamin d along with the hormonal profiles like uh, dihydrotestosterone the the free testosterone levels the prolactin levels and the th- as well as the thyroid function test okay after doing all these investigations okay Uh, we arrive at a diagnosis and then gradually we move on to the management part okay. so i have to take a, a, a detailed history of sure. uh, how they how they how they uh, take care of their hair what are okay. the hairstyle products they use actually we'll be we, we can discuss even the cosmeceuticals and the homemade remedies in another episode so i, I can yeah yeah that will be useful and, yeah as a preventative remedy yeah yes yes and i i take into account all the detailed history of uh, the hair care yeah the products they use uh, the procedures they have undergone okay and all, all this and then suggest medical treatment initially okay. medical treatment as you know minoxidil it's 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 a, it's a common uh, thing which uh, every one of us have used in our lifetime so yeah. it's a different percentage for v- women as well as men okay sure. now it's also combined with uh, certain things like aminexil or finasteride all are 
going to improve the microcirculation of the scalp. Okay. okay. And then uh, if they need some supplements, I also give them biotin supplements, vitamin okay. supplements. Sure. Okay. And then we go for a little advanced treatment, which is called PRP, which is called platelet-rich plasma, yeah. uh, along sometimes with growth factors, concentrate, GFC. Okay. So okay. Uh, PR, uh, platelet-rich plasma, sometimes with a uh, GFC. Sometimes I also do PRF, platelet-rich fibrin. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, these, these methodologies, is, you're talking pla platelet rich plasma and etc. Are you going to inject them or uh, is it? Uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll explain you the procedure in a, in a sure. simple terms. Just okay. take the blood of the patient, okay, 8 okay. to 10 ml, centrifuge yeah. it. It's certain uh, parameters, certain parameters like this much rotation per minute, Absolutely. one or two times, and then uh, re inject into the scalp, onto the scalp. Okay. okay, it's all tiny injections. It's not that painful, relatively painless, I can say. It is for localized alopecia rather than a diffuse one. No, even in diffuse, in chronic cases okay. also you can do. It helps because they are all growth factors, right? Sure. If your follicle is viable, definitely you are going to get back the hair. Okay. So, that, so PRP along with the GFC or sometimes mm. PRF also helps. Nowadays, okay. I'm using uh, synthetic exosomes also. Okay. All right. Okay. A lot of if it's, yeah, if these things are not at all feasible, then we move on to uh, head transplant. All right. Okay. The all right. And uh, what are the success rates of these procedures before hair transplantation comes in? With the, I'm sure the etiology is the majority of the case that treating the etiology is an uh, ideal one and uh, you give all this PRP and etc. In how much percentage do you curtail the hair uh, fall? See, I cannot uh, assure how much percentage uh, the difference would be, but I, I can assure that definitely it's going to, because we do this PRP for thinning of the hairs, if, if, when, ah. when there is thinning of the hair. So okay. it's going to make the hair shaft th thicker. Okay. okay? And uh, the hair follicles also, if they are really viable, definitely they are, it's it's all promoting growth factors. Okay. Absolutely. So okay. indirectly, we are promoting growth factors with platelet-rich plasma, or sometimes okay. we directly give the growth factors in growth factor concentrate. That's it. Okay. All right. There are certain okay. growth factors which need to be supplemented. That's all we okay. are doing. Okay. Okay. And it's 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 not a uh, I mean um, we cannot we cannot compare it with hair transplant. But even okay. after hair transplant, we, after a few months, we need to nurture the hair follicles with these kind of procedures. Ah, right. Okay. Thanks for explaining that in detail. Now, let's come to the inevitable scenario where you have tried everything and it's not working and uh, uh, it's come to my stage where or the frontal your stage, wherever. <clears throat> Yeah. At that point of time, I showed you what you told was the inevitable stuff is going to be hair transplantation. Yeah. Yeah. Can you explain the process of hair transplantation? See, a hair transplant, um, there are a few uh, methods of mm -hmm. for which uh, hair transplant. Earlier, we used to do uh, follicular unit transplant, FUT. <clears throat> Nowadays, uh, follicular unit, individual hair transplant, uh, individual hair follicles are extracted which is called okay. harvesting and re-implanted into the bald areas, which is called okay. FUE. Okay, so earlier mm -hmm. FUT was uh, excising the areas of scalp and then cutting down the hair follicles and then re-injecting, re-implanting. Mm -hmm. But nowadays okay. we take individual hair follicles okay. from the occipital area, viable areas and put it on the uh, bald areas. Okay, uh, so this, okay. Is, this is called FUE. Even okay. advanced uh, forms of uh, FUU, FUE is uh, available nowadays, which is called neograft transplant or direct hair transplant implant, DHI. So DHI is direct hair implant where we implant with uh, the implanter pens. Okay. okay. And even um, robotic hair transplant uh, has been uh, being used mm. nowadays. Uh, I have used for a few cases here. Yeah. Robotic hair transplant. 
more so precise. There, there, there's more precision, more precision with uh, robotic hair transplant. The, uh, okay. the, 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 the robot robo itself will pick viable hair follicles, which are really uh -huh. uh, strong, and then okay. uh, re-implant. That's called harvesting. It helps us in harvesting as well All as right. in implantation too. All right. Okay. See, uh, hair transplantation, it is, I think it's going to be a big topic. We can discuss in detail about all those uh, stuff in the, in one more topic uh, we can have in future as yeah. well regarding hair transplantation. Yeah. Now, as talking about the general problems, you covered uh, the one with uh, 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 hair loss. Then you talked about graying of the hair and thinning of the hair. No, no, I didn't no. talk about the graying of the hair. Yeah. Uh, that's all. The graying of the hair initially you told about because it has been uh, the hair follicle is supplied by means of the melanin and stuff, etc. Now, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the graying of a hair, as you see, see, graying is a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a million dollar industry nowadays because uh -huh. graying of hair, yeah, graying of hair, it's um, we we need to talk a little more into the graying of hair. Why this sure. happened? So okay. let me tell you. See, there is a follicular melanin unit as i said this follicular okay. melanin unit when it becomes exhausted mm. okay we are getting graying of the hair okay. right so if it is premature premature say yeah. uh, it's it said that uh, by definition below 20 years if you develop graying in caucasians mm. or mm. less than in 30 30 years in african americans Okay. This is said to be premature gray. All right. Okay. okay. So there are a lot of factors into it, like atopy, okay. autoimmune reasons. Later we'll discuss this. But uh, okay. anyway, graying is a sign of aging. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. So what happens is the pigment from the hair melanin unit is seized. Okay. Okay. So what happens? There will be loss of uh, self confidence, loss of self esteem in this patient. They'll have a lot of stress, right? Mm. Mm. See, I'll tell you, even uh, there are cases which has been reported, which is uh, something called canit canitis means uh, premature, uh, I mean graying of the hair. Okay, so okay. canitis okay. subita or Thomas More syndrome, where overnight, overnight, a complete whitening of the scalp hair. Really? Just imagine, you, you sleep at night and the next day you wake up with white hair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This yeah. has happened because of stress and trauma. All right. Okay. Oh, overnight. Overnight. All right. Okay. Wow. This is uh, so. Uh, what are the remedies and preventative measures for this? See, uh, the hair uh, color is due to two uh, pigments. Okay. okay. One is the eumelanin and the pheomelanin. The eumelanin okay. is the pigment which gives the black and the brown color. Whereas okay. the pheomelanin is for the blonde and the red color. Okay. okay? And there are uh, combinations in, as well. Okay. Sure. So it depends on the ratio of eumelanin and the pheomelanin. Okay. okay. So we need to promote these pig kind of pigmentations okay. for which uh, you are supplement with uh, the supplements like biotin, calcium pantothenate. Okay, there are also alpha stimulate, uh, alpha melanin stimulating hormones, topical agents which can be applied onto the scalp for okay. uh, improving the gray. If sure. it doesn't work, then you have to go for camouflage. Or, right. or even this hair dyes, as I, as you know, henna, yeah. which is commonly yeah. used. Commonly used. Commonly used. Yeah, common use, called Lawsonia alba. So this mm. uh, henna, black henna, all these are going to promote for a short term basis it's called a uh, semi permanent dye okay okay yes, so so we'll all talk about this cosmeceuticals in another episode sure absolutely yeah thanks a lot thanks for that actually yeah. so uh, in conclusion uh, yeah. as we talked earlier <laughs> if these problems are going to be there what is the general advice that you are going to give to all your patients and what are the practices and the recommendations from your side to maintain the healthy hair and to avoid all these kind of problems to happen, like yeah. preventative. Preventive measures. See, um, we should understand that like skin, hair is also acidic. Okay, the pH is around 4.5 to say 5.5. And mm. we know the cuticle and the cortex, it's all keratinized. Okay. okay, so 
we are we we are we are not supposed to uh, we are not supposed to damage this cuticle so okay. that's a prime thing so all the uh, hair uh, procedures which uh, which are commonly used nowadays uh, like uh, bleaching mm. perm okay mm. then uh, what we call this um, uh, blow drying hot combs mm. okay mm. and mm. Um, even sunlight exposure excessive mm. sunlight exposure mm. and you are not even supposed to have a uh, excessive wetting do not shower frequently <laughs> i have seen yeah, people who shower, shower minimum three course. times a day a, a day which is one of the reasons for uh, this kind of hair loss okay okay so i so these are all things or rough combing even that has they those things have to be prevented okay, okay. and if at all Uh, you have a alopecia or a hair loss mm. kindly they have to consult a dermatologist to find out the root cause for this and okay. to get the remedial measures from them okay okay and it's easily treatable so most of the conditions are easily treatable okay all right oh okay. uh so if you have to give a kind of an algorithm uh for uh, the thinning of the hair or hair loss can you give me an algorithm as to what needs to be done right from the beginning in the form of a consolidation first you told about the preventative measures then the patient comes to you for an uh, uh, thinning of the hair or for alopecia you told that you will be doing some the tuck test and the clinical examination that you will do yeah. you will also run few blood tests uh, to measure the vitamin profile and also the hormone pro- profile yeah. uh, and you will also take a detailed history wherein you will be looking into whether there are any stress related factors or uh, drugs that they are taking or any other specific cause that is causing the hair fall and if that is going to be the case to tackle that first as a causative factor for the hair loss and if this is all come out then accordingly you give the treatment am i missing anything here or uh... no i ardently hope that you should have become a dermatologist <laughs> i become <laughs> quick learner <laughs> it seems to be a quick learner <laughs> <laughs> no 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 excellent no 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 you you came um, very methodically which is uh, great actually um, so after the blood test uh, and uh, the, with the results of the blood test uh, can you just give a flow chart once again as a conclusion bit yeah see after the investigations what we do is we give topical agents yeah. so there are certain oils there are certain solutions okay okay and this our certain gels which can be applied onto the scalp and we are okay. talking about the alopecia of the head like scalp alopecia yeah. okay yeah. so wh- once you uh, apply these things okay you will have this this is going to promote the head growth that is it has it, it is going to prolong the anagen yeah. phase the, the growth phase yeah okay and to shorten the telogen phase the yeah. resting phase so this is called reversal at reversal so we are reversing the uh, i mean uh, the telogen phase into the anagen phase the okay. number one and number yeah. two is uh, they have to take supplements yeah number three is if this doesn't work then we have to go for uh, mean uh, injectables like invasive minimally invasive procedures like okay. uh, platelet rich plasma or prf or uh, this exosomes okay. even that doesn't work if they are uh, i mean they have they are they have that kind of uh, i mean stubborn uh, mm. i mean uh, they, they have the will to yeah withstand all this uh, what we call the uh, hair implantation okay okay hair transplant they can very well go for a hair transplant because it's it's affordable nowadays yeah it's not that's... that costly at all okay okay and it's it's What's a one time procedure one hair uh, gopi no i uh, that depends uh, that uh, depends on the uh, the consultant the the inject i mean uh, the person who is performing the procedure and yeah. the nationality uh, i mean the, the the place where you do say mm. in uh, in certain countries it's it's done as a package so people throng there okay it's done as a package they give uh, like you can go there as a as a tourist like a tourist trip. yeah trip perform the procedure enjoy for 3 days and then come back because yeah. it's a yeah this is a, a minimally invasive procedure i can say 
okay mm. done with uh, tumescent anesthesia uh, you mm. will not feel that much pain okay only thing is you need to take care of the scalp for a period of 7 days that's it yeah. okay yeah. cleansing and all these things which they advise they also give you the kit the whole kit all right okay, okay. to be and as and then you can go in for the uh, the other uh, maintenance uh, technique ma- maintenance procedures like prp absolutely yeah. or the best way is be like us be like the a bath. man yes 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 <laughs> cuz see gandhi ji never did this we adore him right yeah absolutely yeah that's right yeah that's that's what uh gopi fantastic man really 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 a lot of insights into hair uh, I, i learned a lot from you actually i'm sure uh, our viewers are going to be benefited from this particular video at this juncture we want to extend our heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you for being a part of our incredible journey your support and engagement mean the world to us your subscription fuels our passion to bring you the latest and most relevant information in the world of medicine so kindly consider hitting the subscribe like and the notification button stay informed stay curious and once again thank you for being an essential part of iwso family